morning. This is Nancy today. We're out walking in the woods today. Now, if you haven't been in the woods, some people come from countries where they don't have woods. Saudi Arabia, for instance. A lot of people from places where it's desert. Well, if you happen to come to Canada or to the Northeast, you'll find lots of trees. Northeast United States, that would be called New England. When you're walking in the woods, after a while you can get tired. And you might wonder, well, what to do? You didn't bring your lawn chair. Let me show you what you can do. If you're in the woods and you get tired, let's look together. Okay, so there we have a woods. And I'd like to sit down somewhere. Should I lie down on the leaves? I could. Now there might be sticks in the way. The best thing to do if you feel like lying down on the ground is to move the sticks first. You see, make yourself a nice little place to lie. You could even you could even scoot lots of leaves into a big pile and lie down on them. But if it's rained before or if there's a little bit of snow coming down, you might not want to do that. Now let's see what we can sit on. There, look at that. Now do you think that's something that you could sit on? You might be able to. Now let's look over here. We have rocks. Now notice these rocks. Sometimes when you want a place to sit down, the best thing is to find a, lock, a rock that's level. You don't want to sit on a rock that points right up, like that one over there. See how that one just points right up? Well, you don't want to sit on that. And if it's not level, if it's sort of lopsided, you can put your back out. Well, that one looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now, you can tell by looking at a rock if it's wet or dry. That one looks pretty dry. Now, this has moss on it, so the moss could have hold, held the moisture if it rained. And the leaves are probably dry. You can check. You can just come over to these leaves and you can lift them up and see what it looks like underneath. See that dark thing? That's earth. You don't want to sit and get wet, but if you have enough leaves on it, you're going to be nice and comfortable. However, now the edge of this rock, let's look at this from another angle. You see the edge of this rock sticks up, so it might be comfortable, but it might be a little bit too high on that side. You could hang your legs off, and then you could sit and look at this nice view. Okay, now that's one possibility is a rock. But I don't know if you can see these tiny snowflakes coming down. That means it's cold. So that rock is going to hold that cold longer than the leaves. Let's look at the other things we have out here. You see we have trees that have fallen down. Now this one is pointing quite upwards. Look at that. Look at that angle. Now you could sit on that, but it's going to be very uncomfortable. It would be better if you found something flat, level. Now there's one that's level. When you find something to sit on, you also have to take into consideration how big it is. Is that going to break when you sit on it? Well, probably. Let's see. It's also going to move around a lot. So you don't want to sit on something that's not big enough to contain your whole body on there. Let's look over here. What else do we have? Let's go back to this other one we saw at the beginning. Now, it doesn't have to be right next to you. You can walk through the woods to get to it. Here we go. Watch where you're walking. These, these kind of branches will snag on your clothing and you'll be dragging them along. Okay, let's look at this. Now, this is pretty level. Doesn't that look pretty good? It's the right width for your body and it's pretty flat for a seat. Now let's just check this out. Further up here, notice how it's all rotten. Well this tells you a few things. One, it's been here a long time. It could be full of moisture. It might be damp. Another thing it tells you is that animals could have been here looking for bugs in the, in the log. See these little holes in the log? See these? These are where the bugs have gone in. Well, those big ones might be where the woodpecker did. But these little ones, bugs have drilled holes in there, and the bugs live in there. 
So an animal like a bear would find this a very wonderful place to come for a snack. Now let's look at it very closely. Let's see, do you think that a bear has scratched through this? Now here we have a, a little vertical line. You see this little line? That could have been scratched. Let's remove this leaf which has fallen recently. Have another look. Do you see any prints? Any scratches? Here, let's look up there. Notice these little tiny lines. All those little tiny lines. Something has scratched this. And it wasn't a bear, I don't think, because a bear's scratch marks would be a lot bigger than that. And see how it's scratched? It's made a little hole in there. And look at how far apart these lines are. Now, a raccoon's little hand looks about that far apart. The, the nails would be about far, that far apart. I would think that a, a, rac, a raccoon has been scratching on this. And he probably found just what he wanted. He got something to eat. Okay, well, knowing that it's a raccoon and that raccoons are not out at night, it, it, during the daytime too much, it's probably, you're not probably in the middle of bear territory here. Well, you could be, but anyway, the bear didn't eat this. Now look, in this little crevice, look at this, there's some, there's some nuts, some broken open nuts. So, could be that the squirrel has been here eating the nuts. Or maybe a raccoon would eat the nuts too. Raccoons don't have to wash everything. Some people say they do, but that's not true. Okay, so here is the perfect place to sit down and relax. Now I'm going to sit here. Now I've got a little stick sticking out there. If I put one leg on each side of it, you see, then I probably will not, it won't bother me. There! It worked! See, here I am, sitting on the log. And now, while I'm sitting here, now, this is the good part. Now, when you sit, if you sit for a long time, a half an hour, the longer you sit and are absolutely quiet, the better. What happens when you come out here in the woods is every time you step on these crispy leaves, the deer, for far as far as sound travels, can hear that little sound. They'll put their ears up and their heads up. And they'll listen and then they'll scamper away. So in order to sit and watch wildlife, the best thing to do is to stay long enough that the animals that heard you coming have left and or have forgotten that they heard you. Other animals that may come around won't know that you're here because they won't hear you. You won't be talking and making a lot of noise as you're making a movie. Also, you can look at other things. You see that hole in the tree beside me? Now, something could live in that hole. Maybe it must be something small because the hole's not very big. Birds will use holes. Squirrels and chipmunks. Minks will use holes, but only if they're down near the water. This is, this is not a porcupine hole because it's way too small. Now if you look at the bark, you can probably search for some scratch marks. Or any sign that things have walked up and down there. And there's no, nothing at the bottom to make you think it was living there and pushing its waist out at the bottom. So this is, this is what you can do when you go out in the woods. You don't have to stay on the car trail or the foot trail. You don't have to stand up the whole time. And you can learn what's been happening while you haven't been there yet. And remember, a, a pine needle fell in the forest. The deer heard it, the eagle saw it, and the bear smelled it. Well... That's all for today. Here's Nancy Today signing out. Bye.